The MVP discussion is something that changes week to week in the NFL and can be lost at any point late in the season, even if you were the best player the entire year. When you think back to when Wentz tore his ACL, he was unanimously discussed as the MVP until his injury in week 14 with only three weeks left to play. And then he didn't even come close in the voting. Russell Wilson this year will not come close if he continues to turn the ball over at an alarming rate, even though his stats have been incredible and currently are still arguably the best in the league. And I am here to tell you and to tell Isaiah, Kyler Murray right now will be the MVP once the season is finished. Isaiah, I know you are aware of this. The best division in the NFL is the NFC West. Three of the teams in that division are six and three, one is four and six. There's only one other division in the NFL that has three teams with winning records, and that is the AFC North. And I think many would agree that the Browns are nowhere near as good as the record shows. They've had unimpressive victories and they haven't beat amazing teams. It wasn't an unimpressive victory in the NFL. L winning by a small margin. I mean, Baker oh, hasn't so looked good in a lot of Oh, so you beat the opposing team. Yeah, I, Baker hasn't looked great. Kyler Murray and Arizona are leading the NFC West and are leading the league in offense because of their quarterback play. Take a look back to last year. Lamar Jackson was a unanimous vote. He won the MVP, deservedly, by putting up 3,100 yards passing, 36 touchdowns, 1,200 rushing yards, seven rushing touchdowns, and he led the Ravens to a 14-2 record and a first seed in the AFC. Kyler Murray is better than him this year. He is on pace for 4,200 yards passing, 30 passing touchdowns, 1,000 rushing yards, and 17 rushing touchdowns. Right now, as it stands, he's the second most rushing touchdowns in the NFL. He is going to wind up accounting for more touchdowns and yards than Lamar did in his unanimous season. And I know Isaiah is going to mention the fact that Lamar rarely played in the fourth quarter. And while he is right about that, Lamar had a tremendous defense that was fourth in the league in yards given up, third in points allowed, and he did not have to try and outscore people late in games which we know he struggles with and has been a, a large amount of discussion around that Lamar can't win from behind Kyler Murray does not have that luxury this year he has to go balls to the wall every play and carry his team to win the defense right now is ninth in scoring uh, 18th in yards allowed per game and that isn't bad isn't great but in the last three games his defense against good real teams have given up 33.6 points a game they're finally playing someone that can score the ball in the Dolphins the Bills, and the third team is escaping me. The points they've been giving up would be last in the league if that was their actual average. Kyler Murray is 2-1 in this in the last three games with the Hail Mary throw as a highlight. I think it's going to be interesting to see Kyler Murray and the Cardinals against the Seahawks as Russell Wilson has been lighting up a lot of teams. I know he's struggled recently. Their defense, we know how bad that is. I believe it'll be a great game. I'm not going to compare him to other candidates right now because I know Isaiah has a lot, of, a lot to say. Probably will feel some type of way about things I've said. So Isaiah, what is your thoughts on the MVP conversation? Well, Tristan, like most of your beautiful predictions, this one was wrong. But not only is that prediction wrong, the fact you tr attempted to circumvent some of the points I was going to make is wrong because the stuff you brought up has nothing to do with my argument. It's November 17th right now. Things are subject to change. Kyler Murray could score 84 touchdowns a game for the rest of the season. Patrick Mahomes could tie his knee in a knot. We don't know what's going to happen. But as things stand, there is no way Kyler Murray wins the MVP. It's for three reasons, really. One, and most importantly of all, he plays in Arizona. Two, his style is too similar to the last MVP winner. And three, Aaron Rodgers and Patrick Mahomes exist. First, let's look at why playing for the Cardinals is a bad thing. One, you're in a rough division. You've got to play the 49ers, Seahawks, and Rams. Regardless of how good your team is, you're going to lose a few of your divisional games, which is a bad thing in the MVP discussion because generally the MVPs are the one or the two seed. That's just not happening for the Cardinals. They are not going to be atop the NFC by the time the season ends. Number two. The Cardinals have one of the smallest fan bases in the NFL. They don't get as many national TV games as some of the other teams, like the Chiefs or the Packers. This means fewer people are going to be watching them, and fewer members of the media are going to be able to take time and look at their games and say, hey, that guy's pretty special. He's going to win MVP. Second point, Lamar Jackson winning MVP did not do Kyler Murray any favors. I'll rephrase that. Lamar Jackson winning MVP and struggling to find postseason success are looking off in 2020 is not doing Kyler Murray any favors. MVP voters are going to be inclined to look at what Lamar Jackson did and how he has regressed and hesitate to give the award to a running quarterback again. This also hurts my man Josh Allen, so I don't really, don't take this point as some type of attack on Kyler, although Josh Allen is a way better passer than Kyler. <laughs> but finally, let's look at Patrick Mahomes. 
Did I say Lamar Jackson's a way better passer than Kyler? You said you said Josh Allen's a way better passer than Kyler. Oh yeah, I do mean that. Then I thought you the laugh made me think I said Lamar. I got confused a second. That's a right take. No. It's okay. <laughs> That's fucking insane. Finally, let's look at Patrick Mahomes and Aaron Rodgers. Both Rodgers and Mahomes are leading their teams towards the top of their respective conferences. The Chiefs have to go through the Steelers. I don't know if that's going to happen. The Steelers look like they could be an all-time great team, but it's safe to say the Chiefs are going to be the two seed. Same deal with the Packers. They've got some teams they may need to overcome, but they'll be the one or the two seed. That's something Kyler Murray cannot do. Then you look at their passing stats which I'm sorry, are more important than your quarterback's rushing stats. They it's are most valuable player, not most valuable Kyler passer. Tyler Murray. Well, let's be clear, Tristan. No, it's not. The last time the true most valuable player won this award, I have to go back to around the time Adrian Peterson won it. He was truly the most valuable player on that team. But no, since then, it's been the, one of the best quarterbacks in the league on a team with one of the best records. But don't talk while I'm talking. The adults are discussing their points. But you look at their passing stats. Not a fan of looking at stats, but some do jump out at you. Kyler Murray has thrown two more interceptions than Lamar Jackson did in 2019. And it's only nine games in. He has thrown four. Far more than Aaron Rodgers and Patrick Mahomes. Patrick Mahomes has only thrown one pick. Rodgers has thrown three. That is a big difference. That is a huge difference. Interceptions are looked at when it comes to the MVP discussion for quarterbacks. His inability to hold on the ball with his small hands and make good decisions and sling it into coverage is going to cost him the MVP. And finally, the most damning thing, which I neglected to mention at the start of this little tirade about Kyler Murray and the sole reason he will not win MVP. No quarterback under 6'2 has won the MVP award in the last 30 years. You have to go back to the days of short, unathletic white quarterbacks to find quarterbacks under 6'2 which won the award. Some say height is the sole reason Drew Brees has never won MVP. If Drew Brees can't overcome his height, Kyler Murray sure can't. Do I think Kyler Murray is playing? Well, certainly. There's a lot of quarterbacks playing well this year. And Kyler running around everyone is something which doesn't separate him far enough from the pack to make him a member of the same conversation as Patrick Mahomes and Aaron Rodgers. Better luck next year, Kyler. <laughs> Two of the dumbest things I've ever heard you say are one, when you're comparing Kyler Murray and what Lamar Jackson did within his offense to what Kyler Murray is doing within his own offense. Lamar Jackson played an offense that was running the ball at a high rate than many other teams that have ever played in the NFL with three tight end sets, he ran, the running backs ran, they didn't throw it a lot. So that's also going to affect Lamar Jackson's interception numbers and why Kyler Murray's are higher. He's thrown more passes than a lot of other quarterbacks in the NFL. I think he has 311 attempts. I'm not quite sure where everyone stands on that right now. But to compare Lamar Jackson's system to Kyler Murray's where he's actually running a more prototypical offense is a bit insane are they both running quarterbacks that has nothing to do with are they both running quarterbacks say, yes no question that is, you can answer this you can I do it two to, letters or three letters which one yes or to no quote you that is an i don't know football quote right there to equate the way someone runs the ball to the way kyler murray runs the ball is two vastly different things i think we all know russell wilson runs gets a substantial amount of rushing yards every year he can run the ball that's not the same as comparing him to lamar or kyler murray the way they run the ball so you just put lamar and kyler murray in the same conversation so yes you do agree that kyler murray is a running quarterback yeah but they're not he can run he's a quarterback that can run but he can also throw the ball substantially better than lamar jackson and to say <laughs> josh allen is a better throw over the ball 60 obviously he's doing much better this year 68.4 percent but that's a career 60 percent completion percentage guy okay don't career. bring up career with me don't make yourself look stupid again okay but they've the josh same. allen is having a renaissance this year and is setting the tone for his career he's improved in every single year so far of his career and it's going to keep going up and up and up but you cannot sit here and say with a non-smirk on your face that you think <laughs> kyler murray is a better <laughs> passer than josh allen i will give you a better quarterback i disagree with you but it's not worth having the discussion right now but overall game hypothetically sure but you cannot compare the two's passing. <laughs> They're very it's not a conversation. <laughs> There's in in no world can you say Josh Allen is a significantly better passer of the football than Kyler Murray. There's no Funny, world. I just did. He's significantly better than. Him. I don't think it's much of a point having that discussion. Like if you want to die on that <laughs> hill, fine, die on the hill. You'll lose the argument like you already are. But Josh <laughs> Allen just, is a way better passer. You're saying you're than winning Kyler the Murray. argument without providing any 
facts, any analysis Would you on like their game. Some stats? I mean, sure. What he's got point two. Who's leading per- the NFL in passing yards? Who's got more touchdowns? Who's got less interceptions? Who's got better yards per attempt? But then also Kyler Murray is running the ball a lot because he's able okay, to. What are you so, going to do? Not so, run okay, the ball. Okay, so let's be clear. You just brought up running. So. I say you're, we are discussing their ability to pass, Tristan. Stay on topic, buddy. Yeah, I am staying on topic, but you're going to have less passing yards when you're not. He's thrown it 50 more times than Kyler Murray has. And what are you going to say? He shouldn't run the ball because he needs to be throwing more to make to have stats similar to Josh. No, Allen. I'm not going to say you, that. I'm going to say compare? Josh Allen's just a better passer than him. There's no slide on Kyle. Josh Allen's been one of the best passing quarterbacks in the NFL this year. I mean, while I agree with you, I don't think he's not drastically that much better than Kyler Murray. And I think Kyler Murray, what he's done passing the ball has been significant. He's beat the Bills on a, which I would say is a beautiful hail mary pass. Off his back he was the second most to- important player in that play. The Josh Allen pass to Stefan Diggs was far more impressive. Stefan Diggs had to make a play for that ball. Kyler Murray had to play, make a play to get that pass off. But at the end of the day, that was a pinpoint throw by Allen. If he threw that one anywhere else, it's getting if intercepted. Kyler Murray throws a ball anywhere else, it's getting intercepted. No, he's There's not because DeAndre Hopkins had plenty of time to get under that one. DeAndre Hopkins knew he was going to make that catch from the second that ball left Kyler Murray's head. If he was standing in the end zone, he was going to make that catch because of that Bills secondary was so ravaged. Now, Andre Hopkins is the most impressive player in that play. You can't compare those two. If he doesn't throw the ball in an, uh, with a high arc where DeAndre Hopkins is able to high point it and it throws off the defender's abilities to high point it and it's thrown more on a line, it's swatted down and batted down. What... I say, I can't believe the, the, what you're Throw claiming. out the defender's ability to high point. Tristan, they high pointed. They just couldn't jump as high as DeAndre Hopkins. They just couldn't put their mitts on the ball like DeAndre Hopkins put them Jordan gloves on the ball. I'm not trying to trash Kyler for this play. It's a good play. It is a borderline great play. But the throw was not the amazing part of that. The getting away and throwing it part is what should be highlighted. And you're trying to say, oh, what a great throw. No. That part of the play is DeAndre Hopkins' play. You can say it's a great throw and still think that DeAndre Hopkins' catch is better than the throw. You didn't even let no, me talk. That's a perfectly about, great throw. You I'm just saying the throw this. from Josh Allen to <laughs> Stephon Diggs is better. The throw from Kyler Murray can be better than Josh Allen's and still have the catch of that play be better than the throw. Okay, that play was a better play than the uh, Stephon Diggs to uh, Stephon Diggs go ahead touchdown. Wasn't a better throw, just was a better play. I mean, if you want to think that, you can. I mean, if you, you want to be wrong, wrong go you ahead. Want. You can think, okay, Kyler Murray's a better passer than Josh Allen because no particular reason, and then bring up his rushing stats when I try and talk about if he's a better passer or not. But we can go back and forth all day. We've gotten a little bit of broad field. Incredible play by Kyler Murray to beat the uh, Buffalo Bills. I won't take that away from him. Hopkins' part was better, though. I think it'll be an interesting MVP race. But I do not see Kyler Murray finishing anything better than a distant third. Maybe even fourth. We could be a bit premature in discounting Russell Wilson. You're allowed to have one or two bad weeks and still be the MVP. I mean, definitely, like I said, he can come back and have a great last four games and take the MVP back. We saw Wentz lose it because he missed three weeks. So Yeah, you're not going to win the MVP playing 13 games. That has been our thoughts on the MVP race. And if Kyler Murray has a legitimate shot in it, let us know what you think down in the comments below. Be sure to like, share, subscribe, and hey, send us a personal message if you care to. We'd really appreciate it. Take care now.